I see architecture as a metaphor for the civilization. So modern Indian architecture is a metaphor for modern India. It's this dealing with Indian light and Indian landscapes that produces Indian architecture. This is what I see in the five architects that we have uh, in this group. They each in their own way have dealt with light and nature in a very creative way. Whether it's a small project of an addition to a building or to large prestigious projects like a parliament library. Each one of them has revealed how this issue is dealt with. El IEITB en Bangalore es una primera institución educativa en el campo de informática. Lo necesito una extensión a la estructura existente con un programa de edificio que incluye laboratorios de investigación de desarrollo y aulas. La nueva extensión fue diseñada por el arquitecto Rajesh Ranganathan. Mainly what we wanted to do was to really integrate nature with architecture in the most intimate possible way. What we found that was that the old building was sitting within a fairly green uh, surroundings. There were uh, distant trees on the periphery of the site, the sufficient planting around the site. So what we did was we did a sort of an optical illusion where we built certain green edges to the building. And when you view uh, these uh, spaces from inside, uh, the, the foreground of the new green edges merges visually with the background of the old existing tree lines and what it does is it sort of blends the two, the background and foreground, into one seamless green landscape. So you have the illusion of the landscape coming in. En el viejo edificio, el interior y el exterior fueron demarcados muy claramente. Era una caca sellada, pero tenía tres pozos ligeros. El arquitecto decidió emplear estos pozos ligeros en patios reformados artísticamente en nuevo suelo. Pero la idea decisiva que transformó el carácter de los nuevos espacios era hacer perforados en la azotea en una variedad de tamaños. And what this does is that it creates a very dynamic, dappled life, light effect, which changes during the course of the day, and also uh, with the fluctuations in weather, which are very marked in Bangalore, very particular to this place. And these are sort of like these sharp changes, dramatic changes are recorded in the interior in a very strong way. What makes this work uh, special is the way again he's dealt with light and landscape. Uh, in this building you're always aware of the outside, always aware of the light coming in, filtering through the top. The dappled light of those circular openings are uh, very much a product of his sensitivity to the light and uh, landscape. So what would otherwise have been a forgettable small addition to a building is now really quite a uh, uh, sort of an interesting building. Laboratorios de Valor en Hyderabad es una instalación de software para 1500 personas. Arquitectos de CNT conducidos por Prem Chandravarkar fueron seleccionados para diseñar este edificio. In Hyderabad they are very particular about the Vastu Shastra which is their traditional belief system on how architecture should be done, the equivalent of Feng Shui. He had the problem of dealing with a client who was a believer in Vastu. In the Vastu things are predetermined and uh, that dictated that the building had to be a perfect box uh, with no ins and outs. Los arquitectos convencieron al cliente de romper la caja grande en cuatro cuadrantes más pequeños que tendrían una escala más humana. The exterior we felt to break the sense of the box without changing the geometry of the box we had to break the corner. Esto fue hecho por una piel ligera que envuelva a la duda de las esquinas. Además, los cuadrantes fueron perforados creando un atrio donde penetra la luz natural en las zonas laborales. 
so that brings light and energizes the box and also makes an awareness of the community because you can now see across floors you're not confined to just what's happening on your floor estas zonas de trabajo están conectadas uno al otro por una plataforma que es la parte del rasgo más interesante de este edificio la escalera central which starts from the reception in the bottom of the northeast quadrant and climbs up uh, to the uh, corporate floor which is the top of the southwest quadrant and that's that's what unifies the whole thing and the staircase street also has light coming in from above so it has natural light it has a sense of a datum a climbing datum it has water as a focal element when you're coming down the staircase so into that density we start introducing the natural elements also La inferencia en principal al diseño de esta escalera es el paso bueno de Adalak. The first time I visited there I remember I, I went down and I came up and the friend who taken me there said how how much do you think we climbed? And I said maybe about 25 feet and he said you climbed the equivalent of over 5 floors. And I realized you don't feel it because there is so much interest at each level. So in detailing the staircase we started thinking about uh, those kind of issues of of how do you change the texture of the steps? How do you create interest in whether you're looking up, looking down along the steps? A lo largo de la escalera, las plataformas en cada suelo revelan la intención más importante de los arquitectos. The thing that that we are interested in is to show the workplace as something more than a functional grid. Workplaces are really communities, and I think the way we set up the spaces, it has to reflect that the social nature of the workplace. It eventually what gets done is through. is to interaction between people the other thing that we did is that uh, mondrian grid of the external facade we brought that into the internal facades that the quadrants present to the staircases so that public nature of the staircase also is emphasized El IPDEO en Hyderabad es un centro de investigación y desarrollo de los laboratorios de Dr. Reddy, una compañía farmacéutica global. Necesidades de casi 800 científicos y ciertos estándares internacionales tuvieron que ser entendidas y realizadas por el arquitecto a la hora de diseñar los laboratorios. And each scientist, each group of scientists had different requirements, so it was quite a tough task to coordinate all those requirements. they need lot of services in terms of different kinds of gases the quality of air required the cleanliness required estas exigencias funcionales se fueron cuidadas pero también el arquitecto quería que penetra la luz natural en todas las áreas laborales so we cre created this series of skylights uh, throughout the building and uh, brought in nature into the building which was again a very important thing and those green areas with the skylight on the top uh become really the source of light and if you really experience you hardly have to switch on light as long as there is a light outside de dar el vidriero transparente a las paredes de los laboratorios de frente el arquitecto no solo permite que entre la luz en el espacio laboral sino crea un sentimiento que también los científicos son una parte de la comunidad grande it's not just the lab space or the meeting room that's important but the interaction which happens between the scientists uh that's where the most creative ideas happen and the place had to be designed to support that kind of uh, uh, activity al mismo tiempo también sanje mohe quería el edificio tener una ventilación natural para minimizar el uso de aire acondicionado So what we did is along the spine of the building we created cuts in the building. Y cuando el edificio fue construido en la dirección de viento predominante, los espacios al lado de estos cortes se hicieron los puntos fresquitos donde fluía la brisa. And those became interaction spaces. And as you see in a building you would always find uh, find people sitting around in those areas and uh, you know the whole uh, view opens out towards both the direction. no the main spine is focused more towards the linear green area in this particular building he had uh, a good client 
uh, a client who let him do things the way he wanted, though it's a very highly technical building. It's a laboratory, a very high tech laboratory. And what he did was he sh sort of embraced the landscape in his building. He made the landscape very much a part of his uh, design and uh, in that way made the landscape the determinant of his architecture. So it is not as though it was a building you know, installed in the landscape. It was almost like a yin and yang, you know, the landscape and the building uh, very intimately relating with each other. So this is again the theme of light and landscape being the determinant of architecture. And Sanjay Mohoy's uh, building, uh, uh, the Dr. Reddy's labs, reveal that, uh, that expression in his own way. The scale of the entrance is, uh, is, is probably to celebrate the spirit of enquiry. And, uh, and you, you come in and get motivated, you get challenged to do something uh, earth-shaking. Kind of. El Instituto Indio de la Administración en Ahmedabad es una de las primeras escuelas comerciales del mundo. Los edificios de campus que incluye aulas, residencias, etc. fueron diseñados a principios de los años 60 por uno de los maestros del movimiento moderno, el arquitecto americano Louis Kahn. Alrededor del año 2000 requirió una extensión urgente. Bimal Patel fue seleccionado para diseñar nuevos edificios al sitio cercano. That they were in uh, their, 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 their present facilities. The, the building is famous the world over, and uh, they were, I think, at least the people at that time were quite aware of the power that architecture has uh, to create a memorable identity for, for an institution, and <clears throat> in addition to that, give the people who use that building a uh, 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 something to, some, some, ins, some inspiration. Um, the biggest challenge architecturally was to ensure that I don't mimic it, that I, that, I, that I do something that pays homage to him and to his way of doing architecture, because really uh, we all grew up with those things, as his architecture as a sort of ideal here. And um, the, the challenge was to, do, to, to pay homage and to sort of, uh, uh, do something that is in continuity with his architecture, but without mimicking it. This was really the challenge. Bimal Patel, of course, had a very difficult task. He had to do a response to Louis Kahn, and that's not easy. Uh, he had to, of course, it was across the road. And what he did was, uh, he did not use brick, which is the characteristic of Louis Kahn's architecture, primarily because they found that the brick was not weathering well was not aging well in the Ahmedabad climate. So they did away with brick and they have uh, used concrete. Now his firm, Bimal Patel's firm, has done a lot of work in concrete, so it was a natural choice. But the language he uses, those circular openings, the external wall, is all reminiscent of Louis Kahn also, not mimicking, but recalling. The geometry that we have is uh it's very, very, very much like Kant's geometries. Uh, the layout of buildings, how you, how you lay out buildings at diagonals, the way vistas open up uh, past certain um, elements. These are the things that are, that are really, that, that's really what we pick up from the old.
one wants to make the experience of the building in, uh, rich. You want people to, to have some sort of sensuous delight from the building. Um, the thing is you're not going to do it by using rich materials or to use uh, rich ornamentation on the, on the building. You're going to do it through varying the experience as you move through the building. Uh, as you go through, suddenly a view opens up far into the distance, you see something, you see a courtyard, you see a tree nearby, and you want to, 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 to structure the experience of the building. So you put staircases and ramps, places where people can walk up and down and constantly look at things. Sometimes people don't like it because it, you, you get caught in the rain or something like this. But uh, what this does really is it allows you uh, to experience nature, not only um, stay sealed inside a room or inside an air-conditioned space. Really that's what the ramps and the staircases are doing. The courtyards, ramps, staircases are doing is constantly inviting you to, to connect with nature and to um, enrich your experience of using the building. La Biblioteca de Parlamento es un centro de información de alta tecnología para funcionarios del gobierno más antiguos eruditos de investigación miembros del Parlamento Indio. Históricamente, la Biblioteca de Parlamento en particular es una institución que ha sido usada por miembros de la oposición y ha desempeñado un papel importante en garantizar la democracia en India. Durante los años, la biblioteca que solía estar dentro del parlamento había acumulado muchos libros y publicaciones. La falta de espacio dentro del parlamento y nuevas exigencias condujo a la decisión de construir un nuevo edificio que estaría más cercano al centro de información moderna e investigación que solo una biblioteca tradicional. Después de un concurso limitado, el diseño de Rajneval fue seleccionado para la nueva biblioteca de parlamento. So the parliament building I began to conceive is like a guru dealing with the king. If the parliament was the king, then the, this building should be like a guru. Somebody positive, but different in a way. You know, not submissive even. Somebody which gives knowledge to the parliament building. Rajneval, of course, is a... a, a, a mature master. He has already executed uh, compelling works of the last 40 years. And in the 40 years, one sees a certain evolution. And what I am arguing is that evolution is also going towards, uh, shall we say, a deeper understanding of light and landscape. El núcleo del nuevo edificio está arreglado de un espacio llamado el Centro Focal, que está cubierto por una cúpula de cristal único y está rodeado por cuatro espacios abovados idénticos. Está abierto al exterior a un lado. Este Centro Focal está rodeado por tres patios, para rival cada uno de los cuales simboliza un rasgo saliente de la Constitución de India. El primero contiene un anfiteatro hendido que simboliza la libertad de expresión y creencia. El segundo contiene un árbol, el lugar donde fue impartida la justicia en pueblos de India tradicionalmente. El tercer contiene un fondo de agua que simboliza para rival la igualdad de estado y oportunidad. Estos patios están atados por abasos periféricos. The direct influence was from, uh, in a way, the Ranakpur temple because Ranakpur temple has exactly a similar plan, a central core and a courtyard and a peripheral um, passage around the building. And this is what in a nutshell I have done in this building. El templo de Ranakpur, sin embargo, le influye de un modo crucial en su tratamiento de luz natural. As you enter the main entrance hall of the building from the parliament, you have an atrium which is lit from above. 
it's sitting on a ring of light. As you pursue through a corridor, you don't see any building, you see a passage. And that is the kind of thing which I was very interested in, that you have a series of uh, na naturally lit spaces. Y cuando va al centro focal? You only see a glow of natural light at the end of it. And it's only once you are within that focal center that you see uh, the light, uh, the, the four petals of glass and steel through which the light pours in. It was right in the beginning with my design. I had said that that should be a kind of uh, uh, space because that would be the symbol of enlightenment in my opinion. El modelo de Rangoli en el suelo del centro focal, que está basado en el sol, es un símbolo tradicional de la ilustración, un modelo que también está grabado a la plaza central donde se encuentran los cuatro pétalos de la cúpula de cristal, un chakra o la rueda de la ley cósmica también encontraron en la bandera india. La interpretación es muy diferente de los otros artistas que hemos visto, pero su respuesta es todavía a la luz y la arquitectura. And because of his uh, history, because of his uh, uh, past works, he is very concerned about Indian culture. And each building that he does, he tries to respond to it in his own way. And that response is uncompromisingly modern. Esta modernidad en particular está visible en las cúpulas de la Biblioteca de Parlamento. La cúpula de cristal del centro focal, además la cúpula de la biblioteca del erudito, ambos son maravillas tecnológicas. In the middle of these domes, when you look from underneath, you have glass bricks. Estos ladrillos de cristal fueron diseñados y probados muy cuidadosamente de modo que ellos reduzcan la luz rigurosa del India y provean la luz se va adentro. La base de las cúpulas de este grande pasillo también contiene paneles de ladrillos de cristal. Así que la luz natural penetra este grande pasillo desde encima y de los lados. Este crea una luz serena y relajante para el erudito por su investigación. Así que esta luz penetra al sótano inferior donde la mayor parte de los libros están guardados, reduce la necesidad de luces artificiales, también salva la energía ya que los sótanos requieren menos aire acondicionado a fin de guardar los libros en una temperatura óptima. Los tres operativos conectados con sus ventanas de juego profundas también se contribuyen en el aumento de la eficacia de energía del edificio, reduciendo los rayos directos del sol y creando corrientes de aire. Y finalmente los 60 centímetros de la tierra que está puesta en la azotea para crear un jardín también forma una barrera de aislamiento que hace este edificio muy sostenible. Por supuesto los jardines han sido espacios dedicados al conocimiento, el cambio de días y encontrarnos con los hombres desde la antigüedad. Modernity is not a Western narrative. You know, for long it's been thought that it was a Western narrative and we have to follow that path. But slowly India is now showing that a modernity is heterogeneous. Indian modernity is equally credible, equally valuable as any other kind of narratives of modernity because modern means to deal with the present. And India has now begun to 
deal with the present, whether it's in economy, whether it's in politics, whether it's in cinema, whether it's in any of the expressions, and in architecture, obviously, is beginning to, uh, shall we say, define the contours of an Indian modernity. Beyond their functional requirements, the most interesting contemporary Indian public buildings built in the first decade of the 21st century are essentially concerned with integrating man, nature and symbolic dimensions through architecture. The IIITB in Bangalore is a premier educational institution in the field of information technology. It needed an extension to the existing structure with a building program that included classrooms and research and development labs. The new extension was designed by the architect Rajesh Ranganathan. Mainly what we wanted to do was to really integrate nature with architecture in the most intimate possible way. In the old building, the inside and the outside were very clearly demarcated. It was a sealed box but it had three light wells. The architect decided to expand these light wells into landscape courtyards on the new floor. But the decisive idea that transformed the character of the new spaces was to make perforations in the roof in a variety of sizes. And what this does is that it creates a very dynamic dappled life, light effect which changes during the course of the day and also uh, with the fluctuations in weather which are very marked in Bangalore, very particular to this place. And these are sort of like these sharp changes, dramatic changes are recorded in the interior in a very strong way. The IPDO in Hyderabad is a research and development center for Dr. Reddy's Laboratories, a global pharmaceutical company. Beyond the complex functional requirements for the design of the labs that imply respect for international standards, the architect, Sanjay Mohe, was again very concerned with the building's relationship with nature. So we cre created this series of skylights uh, throughout the building and uh, brought in nature into the building, which was again a very important thing. And those green areas with the skylight on the top uh, become really the source of light. And if you really experience, you hardly have to switch on light as long as there is a light outside. It's not just the lab space or the meeting room that's important, but the interaction which happens between the scientists uh, that's where the most creative ideas happen. And the place had to be designed to support that kind of uh, uh, activity. At the same time, Sanjay Mohe also wanted the building to have natural ventilation so as to minimize air conditioning. So what we did is along the spine of the building, we created cuts in the building. And as the building was oriented in line with the predominant wind direction, the spaces next to these cuts became the cool spots where the breeze flows and those became interaction spaces. And as you see in a building, you would always find, uh, find people sitting around in those areas and uh, you know, the whole uh, view opens out towards both the direction, though the main spine is focused more towards the linear green area. The Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad is one of the world's premier business schools. Bimal Patel was selected to design the new buildings in a nearby site. One wants to make the experience of the building in, uh, rich, 
you want people to to have some sort of sensuous delight from the building. Um, the thing is, you're not going to do it by using rich materials or to use uh, rich ornamentation on the on the building. You're going to do it through varying the experience as you move through the building. Uh, as you go through, suddenly a view opens up far into the distance. You see something. You see a courtyard. You see a tree nearby, and you want to 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 structure the experience of the building. So you put staircases and ramps, places where people can walk up and down and constantly look at things. Sometimes people don't like it because it, you, you get caught in the rain or something like this. But uh, what this does really is it allows you uh, to experience nature, not only um, stay sealed inside a room or inside an air-conditioned space. Really that's what the ramps and the staircases are doing. The courtyards, ramps, staircases are doing is constantly inviting you to, to connect with nature and to um, enrich your experience of using the building. The Parliament Library is a high-tech information centre for senior government officials, research scholars and members of the Indian Parliament. The way natural light is brought into the building is a crucial feature of the design conceived by the architect Raj Rival. As you enter the main entrance hall of the building from the parliament, you have an atrium which is lit from above. It's sitting on a ring of light. As you pursue through a corridor, you don't see any building, you see a passage. And that is the kind of thing which I was very interested in, that you have a series of uh, na naturally lit spaces. And as you go towards the focal center, you only see a glow of natural light at the end of it. And it's only once you are within that focal center that you see uh, the light, uh, the, the four petals of glass and steel through which the light pours in. It was right in the beginning of my design, I had said that that should be a kind of uh, uh, space because that would be the symbol of enlightenment in my opinion. A natural element, light, has once again been integrated with architecture. But here it is celebrated not only for its physical qualities, but also for its symbolic and inspirational dimensions. 